like to call the meeting to order. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everybody here at our council meeting on March 12th at this time. And I'll say the meeting will come to order at 1 p.m. Right now, I'll read our land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that the township of Asadown Norwood is located on the Treaty 20 Mississauga Territory and the traditional territory of the Mississauga and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Curved Lake, Hiawatha, Alterville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island's First Nations. The Township of Asadel Norwood respectively acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain these responsibilities to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. I will now invite everyone to pause for a moment of silent reflection to prepare for the council meeting ahead as a gesture of respect and contemplation. I will now ask members of council to declare any direct or indirect pecuniary interest before this council. Seeing no hands, we'll move on to the approval of the agenda. I'm looking for a motion to approve today's agenda as circulated or amended. Circulated. Circulated, Deputy Mayor Burke, second by Councillor Walsh. All in favor? Motion's carried. Approval of the minutes. I'm now looking for a motion to adopt the regular and public minutes meeting minutes of February 27th as presented or amended. As presented. As presented. Councillor War, seconder. Councillor Walsh, with comment. With comment. Go ahead. Uh, just on C3, if I can, uh, just a comment regarding the Ontario um, Autonomy Regional Conservation Authority mm -hmm. uh, and their definition of a, this. Oh, sorry. I'm, okay. I'm ahead of myself. Uh, uh, not a problem. <laughs> I was wondering your goal. Um, is there any uh, business arising no. from the minutes of February 27th? Oh, sorry. I'll call the motion. <laughs> everybody in favor? <laughs> All right. Well, is there any business arising from the minutes of the 27th? No? All right. Um, moving on to the consent agenda. Um, Onto the consent agenda, we have correspondence items C1 through C5, report R1 and the library board and special events committee meeting, meeting minutes. Do we have someone to approve these as circulated or amended? With the comments. <laughs> okay. Second, <laughs> Councillor Walsh. Comments, Councillor please. Walsh has a comment too, <laughs> I know. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burke. Okay. Um, I was just going to comment uh, C1, R1, and then just a special events committee meeting. So. Okay. Uh, else, uh, do you want to proceed now on C1? Uh, sure, sure. Um, just on the cemetery transfer abandonment, um, I was actually surprised that we got a letter back about it. Um, that that was basically my comment. Unfortunate that the letter stated what it did state because I, I, I don't think this is the last that ministry is going to see of it no. um, because it, it it is an issue. So hopefully. Um, I think it's something that, that we should keep on the back burner, and and I, I don't think we should give up on this yet. No. I, I think maybe down the road we will be, be able to get some funds. But I appreciated the letter, so that right. was my that was my C one. And Councillor Walsh C three. Yeah, on C three, just regarding the autonomy conservation authority, it's just nice to see that the definition of a water course, um, I think, is a much Clear, more defined definition of water course, which I think is was well due. So just read his commenting on that. That and the permits. Yes, I did. A lot more broad. Any other comments? Um, uh, thanks for the reward. Yes, thanks. I, I think on 
R1 yes. uh, for the reports, but it, just the uh, the review the review was really well done. Uh, I thought it was really clear. The graphics are great, and you just don't realize how much the township does do in a year. And uh, it was it was nice to see that kind of in one report. So I just wanted to say well done. Well done, now. Uh, Councillor Walsh, you have something? Yeah, on our one, I guess my only comment was I know I reached out to the to um, Again, well done. Um, I think just to back up what Councillor Orr said, when you kind of put it all together, there's a lot that's done in a year. So that was great. I think the only couple of pieces of feedback I passed on to uh, Melanie was uh, where we had the tax rate in, whether we could add in the county yeah. tax rate. We do now know it. So yeah. that can be added in to people if they know. And the other one was just around uh, curbside collection. Um, it's great to see numbers. I always like to know how they compare to last year. So we were down in collection compared to last year. I reached out to Melanie. Thank you, Peter, for uh, providing some insight into that. Obviously, we didn't have a direct last year, so that would have had some impact on the amount of garbage that's going in there. We do have the food recycler program going that may be taking away some waste. Uh, so again, just all little things, but it's just kind of nice to have that in our back pocket. Right. Yeah, you get asked by a resident. Any further comments? Okay, we have a mover and second for this. Now we'll. No, I'll take it. That's what yeah. I said. Uh, one, one more. more. Yeah, I have the one more question uh, for the minutes of the special events committee. Yes. Um, through you, and this is to Councillor Walsh. So, in your um, report for Canada Day, July 2024, it said fireworks were confirmed. And I remember having a conversation. Um, there was some discussion around whether we, whether or not we were having it because Hastings does it. I'm sure we are sitting at this table. I don't think I dreamed that up. So I just wondered where we were. Yeah. So the plan is we had uh, fireworks have been purchased for use at the winter market day, and with all the construction going on right. at the okay. water tower, uh, that was just not feasible to do. Right. So we do have fireworks available. So the plan was we okay. do have them. Okay. Uh, the Marius, is unfortunately, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, it's been invested. Right. So the feeling was, let's let's do plan okay. to use them on Canada Day. But no, that that discussion of whether we do have them going forward mm -hmm. has been discussed because, yeah. let's face it, the one that Hastings are spectacular. Not that ours aren't good, but do we need to be competing against mm -hmm. one another? Yeah. Not the same event. Yeah, and I certainly agree with that. So I I think it's something that. Needs to be decided so, at some point in yeah. time. So Very thank hard. you. Uh, Councillor Ward. Um, thank you. Just to follow up on what Deputy Burt was saying, um, I, I agree that we, you know, we celebrate Canada Day, but let's focus on something that we really do well. And when another neighboring municipality does, as you said, this spectacular fireworks, I see the stream of cars going. Yeah. Uh, uh, that and we just do. And so, you know, it's hard to compete. Um, Compete, and I don't think we should compete. No. I think no. we do, do no. think we do well. Anyways, that was no. a good comment. Thanks, Councillor Hodgkins. For you, Mayor, is it a case that they can just be saved for next Christmas, or is it too long to hold the fireworks until the December? Ultimately, ultimately our fire chief would have to answer that. Yeah, I just didn't I know it. Not, not able to hold that long. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good holding them. I used to have my license for it too. Okay. And some of them get older, and yeah. the problem is they don't light off. And then you have a fireman that has to go up there and try and deal with them. Yeah. And that's okay. not fun. Yeah. And can I just add one more comment on that? I believe um, for many years now, the um, the fairgrounds rents out the space for one of their dog shows. They host many mm -hmm. dog shows. Uh, June, July long weekend is usually one of them. So I can only imagine what it's like around the neighborhood the with don't. fireworks and a dog show. They really probably don't go hand in the end. So it's something you need to look at. That's Sorry. 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 <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it does tweak. That's something we should follow up with fair more because if there is a dog show that weekend, mm -hmm. it probably is not a good time to be. Letting off fire. No, it has happened. It has happened. Or, yes. like it, it has happened, but it's just another reason yeah. to let Hastings yeah. do the do the job. In right. the when we were sorry, I can't remember. They used to do May twenty fourth here when we were younger. 
It was the May 24th fireworks. Long time ago, they did. Yeah. yeah. Long, long time Is that ago. that not a film anymore? <laughs> kind of. But anyway, <laughs> somewhere the fireworks will get used somehow. Absolutely. And yeah, that committee is small, so having another event on no, May 24th is not going to happen. <laughs> Just pull one up. Put one up. Very no problem. So can I have a motion of acceptance then? Yeah. Everybody's in favor of that? That's fine. Moving along to delegations, we have Farah Charity of Food Cycle Science. We have a virtual delegation with us today, Sarah or Farah with the Food Cycle Science. Thank you for joining us today. Please go ahead with your presentation. Thank you for having me. I will share my screen and then get started on the presentation. Perfect. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks again for having me. My name is Farah Sheriff Dean, and I am the Municipal Program Coordinator at Food Cycle Science. And I am here to present the final survey results for the Township's Food Cycler Pilot Program. And before we launch into the results, I wanted to give you a short recap of who we are. Um, Food Cycle Science is a Canadian company. We're based out of Ottawa and we're 100% focused on providing food waste diversion solutions using our innovative technology called the Food Cycler. Uh, 2022 and 2023 were really big years for us. Uh, we were selected as finalists in Impact Canada's Food Waste Reduction Challenge. And I would like to acknowledge that your township's Food Cycler program was made part and possible due to the federal funding from this program. And as a company, we're really proud to say that as of today, the Food Cycler is the trusted food waste diversion solution for over 120 municipal partners in Canada. And when Aspidel Norwood joined, you were the 81st municipality to pilot the solution. And we'd like to acknowledge and thank you for your willingness to trial an innovative solution to the longstanding problem that is food waste. So without further ado, as I mentioned, with support from Impact Canada's Food Waste Reduction Challenge, your pilot was run that included 100 participating households. The net cost to the township was $10,000 plus shipping and HST. And your program ran from July to September of last year, where usage was tracked for 12 weeks to calculate total waste diversion, and your residents completed a survey to provide their data and feedback. So we were able to collect 91 responses from the 100 participants, a 91% response rate, which is excellent. And you'll see that these first two questions here really give you an idea and give you a sense of how important the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and waste is to your residents. Uh, your residents rated a greenhouse gas reduction an 8 out of 10, and your uh, residents rated waste reduction as a 9 out of 10. So when we asked your residents where their food waste went prior to using their food cycler, a large majority said that their food waste was going into the garbage. A smaller number said that they composted all year. And for others, that was only a possibility during the spring and summer months. And when we asked your residents why they didn't compost, 69% uh, chose not to because of concerns uh, with animals like bears and raccoons. And a large number of residents also reported concerns about odors, maintenance, and space. And these answers are very much in line with a lot of the data that we've collected in our municipal program. And the food cycler really does prove to be a great solution for these issues because it's easy to use, it's odor-free, and the byproduct prevents wildlife encounters. And when we look at the split of devices, um, it, it was about a 60-40 split between the FC30s and Eco5s in the township. And when we look at the diversion data, um, your residents were running an average of 3.43 cycles per week on their FC30s and 3.14 cycles per week on their Maestros uh, or Eco-5s. 
So this is equivalent to 223 kilograms of food waste per year per household being diverted using the food cycler, which works out to 22.3 metric tons of food waste from the 100 food cyclers over the course of the year being diverted. And the 100 food cyclers in the township will be diverting 29 metric tons of CO2E equivalents per year. Um, and this is about 34.6 acres of forest every year sequestering carbon, which is great. And when we asked our residents about the number of garbage bags they generated, standard garbage bags they generated prior to using their food cycler, they were generating about 1.24. And after using their food cycler, they were generating about 0.92. So this translates to your residents generating 0.32 fewer standard garbage bags per week, uh, which is a reduction of 16.6 .6 garbage bags per household per year, not being trucked to your local landfills. And we included some comments from your residents about the impact that's had on um, their waste. So when we asked your residents if increased awareness of food waste motivated them to waste less food, an overwhelming majority, 69.7% said that yes, it did. And when people manage their food waste at home, they really become much more aware of how much food they're wasting in the first place. And we always say the most effective waste diversion strategy is to not generate any waste to begin with. So the awareness that comes with this program is incredibly important. And even though it can be difficult to put that into numbers, it's an added value that the solution provides and definitely contributed to the reduction of garbage bags uh, mentioned in the previous slide. So when we asked your residents if the food cycler was large enough for the quantity of daily food waste they generated, 81% um, of people who chose the Maestro or the Eco5 said that yes, it did. And out of those that chose the FB30, 51% um, of people said that it was right size. In previous pilots that only had the FC30 as an option, we've seen anywhere from 40 to 65% of people saying that it was the right size for them. So this indicates that offering the Eco5 with double the capacity greatly increased resident satisfaction with the size of their food cycler. Uh, that being said, 49% of your residents who chose the FC30 still said they wished it was larger. Uh, indicating that price might still be a factor in their choice of device. Um, so there is always an option to purchase a second bucket uh, that effectively doubles the capacity. Um, and it's also a much more cost-effective solution for people who would not be able to purchase an Eco5. And when we asked your residents if they had seen an increase in electricity costs during the time that they use their food cycler, 6.9% uh, reported uh, that they did see an increase and 48% of residents reported that they were unsure. Uh, this 48% typically indicates that any increase in costs were either not noticeable or not uh, or negligible to residents. So when we asked residents if the municipality were to offer a food cycler program at low or no cost, 88.3% of your residents indicated that they thought that their friends and neighbors would participate in a program. And when we asked residents that they would recommend the food cycler to others, an overwhelming 91.6% would said that they would recommend it based on their own experience. And this slide is pretty self-explanatory and it really speaks to the success of the program. 97.6% uh, of your residents will continue using their food cycler as a solution to their food waste moving forward. And this level of participation really far exceeds any other organic waste management solution there is out there today. Uh, for example, here in Ottawa, where we have the Green Bin program that has weekly curbside pickup, we only really have a 57% participation rate. And when we look at backyard composting, which is available to everyone with the space to do so, the rate of adoption has been stagnant for the past few decades. And based on the results we just looked at, it's quite low across your township. So the 97.6% participation rate uh, in the pilot is incredibly encouraging and speaks to the willingness of your residents to adopt this program. And overall, 
uh, your residents rated the program 4.6 stars out of five, with 68% of your residents rating it at five stars. And this is really a testament to all of the work that has been put into the planning and the launching of the pilot on your end and making sure that the residents had all the answers and their questions were answered um, if they did arise. And in the survey, we like to ask residents for feedback and comments, and we like to be transparent and also share some of the constructive comments and helpful comments that residents have made that we can learn from. So those are shared here. And just to recap uh, what we've discussed, 22.3 metric tons of food waste is being diverted from landfill per year from the 100 food cyclers in use in the pilot. Your residents reported a 0.32 bag reduction, which is a 16.6 .6 bag per resident per year um, reduction of food waste from the landfills. And 97% of your residents will continue to use their food cycler. And just to kind of give you an idea of what it looks like um, to have the food cycler as a municipal wide uh, organic waste diversion solution, um, the city of Nelson in British Columbia has 5,000 homes and they've adopted the food cycler at the community level. Um, some of the resources in place um, is a partnership with the local grocery store where they host a refill station for residents to access carbon pellets for, for their filters for free. Uh, we also have a local repair program, bear proof bins for residents to drop off their soil amendment um, if they don't use it at home. We also have an e-waste recycling program and an extensive education resource program. So the possibilities with an expansion really are endless um, and can be customized to work with the best. Sorry, did I? All right. And, and uh, some other next steps. We do have a emission calculation tool, which offers you a life cycle analysis of a food cycler organics program. Um, it's a consultative tool uh, that helps you assess the impact your community has by eliminating GHG emissions and the impact it can have on sustainability efforts. Uh, we also have new technology coming in the summer of this year. It will be a three and a half liter model. So in between the FC30 and Eco5 in terms of sizing and its footprint will be just a little bit smaller than that of the current FC30. Um, and as one of our early implementation partners, you have first right of refusal when it comes to any Impact Canada funding. And we just ask that you accept this presentation as information. And if there is interest in looking at what an expansion could look like, we're happy to discuss that with you. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions or comments? Any questions or comments, councillors? Uh, Councillor Roy? Uh, uh, thank you, Premier Mayor. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. It was excellent. Um, I, I do have one question, um, okay. if that's okay. I don't know if you can hear me or not. I can, I can, which is great. <laughs> okay, um, I was just wondering, um, like I think the 92% um, percent, um, rate on the survey was really great for really the community. Um, but I was wondering how many other um, municipalities that did this pilot program are now expanding um, to do it again. And do you think that there is going to be more funding opportunities uh, from the government? Have you seen anything uh, to that as well? Of course, um, in terms of funding opportunities, uh, that's something that we have a team on our end, a uh, government relations team that works to find further funding opportunities. And we're definitely happy to discuss that and, and give you some options for what might be coming down the pipeline. Um, and we have uh, actually quite a few expansion programs running right now from the pilots that we launched last year. I believe we're at five or six. I, will, I can give you a more accurate number, but we've had um, quite a few of our municipal partners can come back to us, let us know about what an expansion would look like for them, what makes most sense for their community, um, and we make sure that we can work with them to kind of reflect that to the best of um, our capacity.
capacity and in terms of what would be best suited within those municipalities and townships. Um, so we are definitely happy to kind of give you options and see what that looks like. The emissions calculation tool is also a really useful tool to kind of look at what expansions would be. We also have the feasibility study uh, run by the city of Nelson prior to implementing um, the citywide program. So that's something that we can also share with you and it just helps you make a better decision, makes you better informed in terms of what it should look like for your community. Thank you so much. No and, uh, Deputy Mayor Burke. Oh yeah, thank you, Katie Mayor. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, and this is more of a comment for, for the rest of council. Last meeting, two meetings ago at county, um, last meeting, there was quite a discussion on um, the, the way waste is kind of changing at the county, the looking at the upload of garbage from the township to the county, looking at green waste options. This is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. There will be a delegation coming here in April, I believe, um, to hear all about that. So this ties in quite nicely to hear this before that comes here. So I just want to let everyone else know. So thank you. Perfect. Yes, and remember that was basically my question is back to, to the county folks as yes. to what's happening with potential with green waste mm -hmm. and with all the changes in, in, in overall garbage recycling. So time later. Okay. Well, thank you again, uh, Farah, for your uh, presentation. Uh, recommended motion is that the Council of the Township of Asadel accepts this food cycler presentation for information. Uh, moved by Councillor War, seconded by Councillor Hodge Greaves. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you so much, Thank you. everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thanks. Moving along to our staff and committee reports, R2, uh, Peter Deshane, Manager of Public Works and Environmental Services, Pre Risk Assessment Report. Thank you, uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, so, this report is regarding a tree risk assessment that uh, the township completed in 2023. Um, and it was completed by Davy uh, Resource Group. Uh, sorry, Davy um, Davy Resource Re Group. <laughs> Jeez, I'm almost speaking today. <laughs> <laughs> tongue twister. Yeah, it's a tongue twister for some reason. Um, so this was uh, this was initiated as a result of the Direco in 2022. Um, we felt that it uh, would be good to assess all of the trees within the municipal right of way throughout the township and the village, uh, just to determine what trees uh, we would have that are considered high risk. Uh, so, as you can see in the report um, uh, attached, uh, there was sort of a number of things that they looked at um, that included the location, uh, the diameter at breast height. Uh, of the tree, and that's actually 1.5 meters uh, below or above ground. Sorry, um, the species of each tree inventory was collected as well, um, and the health condition was given a good or poor, poor rating um, or a dead rating as well. So, upon completion of the condition assessment, uh, maintenance recommendations were provided for each tree, um, and. Based on those recommendations, uh, there was a list um, of priority one pruning trees, priority two pruning, and priority three, and then priority one removal, uh, priority two and three removal as well, uh, being priority one uh, uh, being the most risk or the highest risk um, trees. So in the table, um, you can see there was a total of 1,687 trees assessed uh, during the program. And of those, uh, 15 were rated as priority one pruning and 62 were uh, rated as priority one removal. Uh, the largest portion of the tree species uh, in, the, in the right of way that um, are listed there at the most risk are white ash, and as we all know, that's probably as well a result of the uh, emerald ash borer, um, unfortunately. Um, so staff, um, we have been working on a plan to take care of the removal or the pruning um, of all those trees listed. And I will say that uh, we're in really good shape right now. Um, we're actually at the point of 
uh, just uh, getting some quotes for removal and pruning uh, that we can't handle in house. Uh, so those would be trees that are uh, considered dangerous or close to hydro lines or any other objects that uh, we don't want to damage. Uh, so we'll keep you updated as to the progress on that. But I, I would suggest that by the end of um, this uh, spring season, we'll be uh, we'll be in really good shape. Uh, so financial Im implications, uh, the approved 2024 public works operations budget included $70,000 for the removal of the priority one trees and the priority one pruning. Um, and this includes uh, rental costs for wood chipper, retention of a contractor for trees that uh, we cannot remove with township resources. In conclusion, the tree assessment and inventory report will give staff a valuable reference to plan and to manage high risk trees throughout the township. It is evident that the emerald ash borer has had a significant impact on almost all of the ash trees within the township and that the impacts of the Durango storm in 2022 were immediate and very little long-term effects are noticed as a result. Staff will work towards the removal of the priority one trees in 2024 and will build a plan for subsequent years uh, for all priority two and three trees as required. Um, and staff will develop a succession plan for the replacement of trees following the completion of the recommendations as set out in the report. And that is the end of my answer. Okay, uh, thank you, Peter. Council, I'll state the recommended motion that the Council of the Township of Bassadale, Norwood receives its report regarding the tree risk assessment report for information. Moved by Councillor Walsh with comments. with comments, second by Deputy Mayor Burt. Comments, uh, go ahead, Councillor Walsh. Um, for you, Mayor. Peter, so the 77 trees will get taken care of well, they'll fall easily within the seventy-eight thousand dollars budget we have. Will we use all that budget for those seventy-seven, or will there actually be budget left over that some of the priority two, either pruning or or removal, could also be done in that budget? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, it, it looks like uh, we're going to have some budget left. Although I will say, though, um, we're going to have to do some stump removal as well. Okay. So I think we'll find that the budget is probably going to get mostly used. Uh, there is a, a large number of stumps now um, that we're going to have to take care of. Uh, but I will also say that I think we're going to be, we are going to be in the priority two and three as well within this budget year. So um, subsequent years, I think will be significantly less than what we're seeing right now in terms of budget. Okay. Yeah. And just so yes. one additional question again. And I was actually just going to the daily resource group. Yeah, it's hard to say. It is. Uh, their summary of findings, the one in there that kind of worried me a little bit is under the health condition component between poor and dead. Mm -hmm. That's 960 trees. That's yeah. like 56% of our trees are yeah. either poor or dead. That's a little scary. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sir Mayor. It, it is rather alarming, uh, but I will say that the majority of those are ash trees, and we are working um, very diligently right now to take care of as many of those as we can prior to the bird nesting window starting up in, in the middle of April. Um, so I, I, I think we'll be in really good shape uh, come the middle of April. Uh, we've made some very good progress, but again, um, we can report back um, in terms of what we're going to need to do in, in the following years. Just to follow up on Councillor Walsh there, some of the stump removals are stumps that are out there now that haven't been removed, correct? Of ones that were done earlier? Uh, we haven't removed any of the stumps um, right. of any of the trees that we've yeah, so, so we're not just... Yeah, so, so it is down. more. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird? Oh, yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, just, I have a question for quick clarification. Um, in the report is township-owned right-of-ways. So... Does that or does that not include forced access roads? I'm assuming it does not. Well, um, it does, except that um, <laughs> <laughs> that because it's a forest road, that's going to be a little bit trickier for us to deal with. Okay. Um, but I, but I, in the in the report, are those trees part of that report? Yes, they are. Okay, yes. okay, I wasn't yeah. sure. They like you say, they're trickier to deal with. Yeah. I just the way I read it. Those roads weren't even included in the study. 
but they well, were private roads were not included, no. but any of the forest roads that we have, including River Road and Sand Road, yeah. were included Those were the in the risk assessment. Okay, yeah. thank you. And um, I have two more, but I'll just do one because I don't know I'm only allowed two. Um, not this, and maybe this will be coming, maybe I can bring this back to general business, but there's going to be a lot of wood. Um, what is, I don't think we have a policy in place. Does the wood go to the adjacent landowner? Does it go back to be stored at the gravel pit? And then, you know, people come in and do a tender or a bid. I don't think there is a policy in place. I think it was mentioned a couple of years ago. I just didn't know how we're handling, you know, all those logs on the side of the road. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, so in past, um, up until this point, there isn't a policy in place, mm -hmm. but sort of the unwritten policy was that we would approach the adjacent yeah. landowners if they want the wood, um, they would have first grabbed that. Um, we've been pretty successful with that yeah. in getting rid of it. It actually saves a lot of time and money for yeah. everyone. Um, so there is actually not very much coming back from okay. the pit, yeah. um, but if it does, it will put for tender. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just wasn't sure, you know, how we how we were just like that. Just so. to follow up on that, I do know at the county that they usually leave it. They tell the landowners it's there for a week. If it's not picked up, the county picks it up and it's gone. Right. We uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, we actually don't leave it in the right of way. I just uh, no. that it, yeah. It's a bit of a risk for the township to leave it in the right of way. So we we do actually if they have a designated spot um, that's very close, we'll just. Um, Take it there, it's quite easy for us to do. Right. Yeah. Uh Councillor War. Yes, thank you, Dean Mayor. Um, just um a couple follow-ups if I may. One, um, is is there any thought that with um, all of these tree removals okay. that it might be um, prudent to um get uh, a stump grinder or uh, maybe a wood chipper that would um you know, uh, help alleviate things. I, I know that it, it is another piece of equipment, but and there would have to be training opportunities for staff. I was just wondering if there was any value in something like that. And my second question is, I did notice in the report that the mapping was all done by GIS, so it identified all the trees. So I assume that that's now the property of the township, so they can identify all the tree canopy that we paid for the report, I'm assuming. So, yeah, so my, those are my two questions. Thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, through you, Mayor. Um, there are going to be a lot of stumps to take care of, and it's quite a little process. We have to get locates um, before we can tackle them because quite often there is a utility that um, gets intertwined with the roots. So, we just want to make sure that we're not damaging that utility. Um, so, I think um, our approach is going to be to rent a stump grinder for now. I think the cost of purchasing one might not be feasible at this point. Um, but if we see that um, the rental costs are going to uh, approach more than 50% of the cost of buying one, it would definitely be worth looking at it. Um, so we'll we'll keep an eye on that. Um, in terms of having access to the GIS, um, we do have access to that. There is a, a web portal that they gave us access to, and we can go and, and get all the GIS locations uh, from that portal. Okay, thank yeah. you. Just a follow-up question, Peter. Um, yes, trees are coming down. Are trees being replaced? Um, so it, as part of my conclusion um, and recommendation um, that we would develop uh, a replacement program, um, we do currently have $5,000 in our operating budget um, for, it basically covers the cost of 40 trees. Yes. Um, we are using those currently as a, as a live snow fence or yes. in areas that we want to use as a, as a live snow fence. But I think that that program should be enhanced um, just based on the number of trees that we're going to be removing. Um, and it's going to have to be something that's done over a number of years. Right. Um, and we may want to look at like purchasing some larger trees too, because um, they do take a while to grow. But but it's certainly something we need to, to develop. For I sure. was noticing a list of the names of the trees. Yeah. The Conservation Authority does have a tree sapling program that they do every year. And there's a lot of uh, people that take advantage of that. And I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. Yeah, um, I've, I've heard of the program and it's certainly something we can approach them and- and Because you'll get them a lot more reasonable price there yep. than you will anywhere else. For sure. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor of the motion? Motion's carried. Thank you, Peter. 
And now we'll move on to the consent guideline. Yes, thank you, three Mayor. Uh, so this report is uh, regarding a municipal consent guideline. Um, in 2021, the Building Broadband Faster Act um, was adopted by the provincial government. And this legislation was intended to reduce barriers that can cause delays with building broadband infrastructure in all communities and will help to provide reliable high-speed internet. Um, so that legislation along with the inception of funding from the provincial government to move this project forward uh, will result in uh, a large number of projects being uh, taken place or completed in a short period of time. And so municipal consent applications are going to increase for the township um, significantly when it comes to Norwood. Um, in terms of the timing as to when it's coming to Norwood, we're not really sure, although we think it's gonna be in 2024. So we wanted to have a formal process in place um, that that will help guide uh, both the uh, infrastructure owner and the township in um, getting these municipal consent um, permits issued. Um, so in general, municipal consent means that uh, it's a consent in writing from the municipality on any activity or land use or building use um, for which an application is made in terms of um, municipal policy, guidelines, standards, and bylaws, or other relevant legislation. So it's intended to give permission to a utility company or utility owner to start work and install their infrastructure or relocate it or upgrade, uh, whatever the case may be within a municipal right away. Uh, it will involve a formal process of drawings um, that will show the placement of apparatus and the utility within the township right away. And it will be submitted for review and approval. Uh, consent will be accorded to applicants or applications that have considered low impact or limited deviations from the primary usage of the land or buildings within the right of way. And this guideline will provide consistency throughout the township within the township right of ways for the placement of this infrastructure. So in other words, the utility company won't be able to come in and place it wherever they want within the right of way. This will give us that authority to say we want it here so that we're consistent throughout the township. The application process will involve a utility company or applicant um, submitting an application, and that will be done through uh, the township's website. Um, there is um, an application form attached to the back of this report that they will fill out and um, submit. Um, and there will be a non-refundable application fee of uh, $250 that will go along with this application. And that is to cover the cost of the review and issuance of the permit. Um, under the guideline, applications are required to be submitted a minimum of 30 days prior to the commencement of any work, and that will give us time to review the applications and issue the permit. Um, and it is, it's expected, and this is in accordance with uh, current legislation, um, that a response will be given within 10 business days uh, for proposed infrastructure extending less than 30 kilometers in length and 25 business days for infrastructure extending greater than 30 kilometers in length. And like I said, those uh, timelines are intended to meet the requirements of table four performance timelines for buried route on uh, municipal rights of way, building broadband faster in Ontario, November, 2021. Um, on, on completion of uh, a review of a municipal consent, um, a permit could be issued, um, provided that there are no concerns with the application. Um, and municipal consents will be valid for a period of 12 months. There will, uh, as I mentioned, there will be a non-refundable fee of $250, um, and the fees and charges bylaw will be updated accordingly um, and presented at a future council meeting for consideration. Um, applicants will also be required to submit an application for a road occupancy permit at the same time uh, or prior to completing any work. 
and that's in accordance with uh, the Township Bylaw 2023-34. And failure to do so may result in enforcement of the bylaw up to an accounting points. There is a detailed design requirement as part of their submission, um, and that will uh, ensure that the vertical and horizontal alignment of the proposed work is in accordance with our policies or things that uh, we may wish to impose. Um, the design requirements include um, horizontal and vertical alignment, minimum clearance requirements from existing infrastructure, minimum depth of cover, uh, requirements for surface access to infrastructure, um, like panels and things like that that they may have, um, and or requirements for common trenches if they so choose to go that route as well. Um, the guideline will allow new road surfaces um, to be protected. Um, so within the guideline, it's to ensure the long-term sustainability of townships infrastructure and disruption and inconvenience to the public resulting from repeated construction activity. Um, we wanna make sure that that's minimized. Um, so this will mean that any proposed work in or under a new or recently reconstructed road surface will be reviewed uh, with an additional lens. For proposed work under any infrastructure that is three years old or less, it will undergo a comprehensive review, including the type and methods of construction being used in order to mitigate any potential ne negative impacts. This may mean alternative routes or construction methods uh, may be required by the applicant and, and justification will also uh, be required by the applicant for their proposed work under that new road surface. Uh, enforcement of the guideline. The guideline will allow, allow the township to enforce accept, acceptable restoration to the satisfaction of the township and or allow the township to recover any costs associated with deficient restoration that was not corrected by the applicant. This is a problem that we currently have um, without this guideline. Infrastructure owners come in, they they put something in within the right of way and they don't do restoration work appropriately and that we're left to take care of the mess. Um, the guideline, another really important uh, part of this guideline will be the as-built records. Um, all applicants will be required to provide as-built records to the township within 60 days of completing their work. Um, this will um, give the township uh, records of that infrastructure when planning uh, future work, whether it's a reconstruction project or another application from another infrastructure owner uh, so that there are no conflicts, hopefully. Uh, financial implications. Application fees collected from municipal consent applications will be transferred to the appropriate capital construction reserve. Uh, this will either be public works uh, construction reserve or water wastewater capital construction reserve or a combination of the two depending on uh, what it impacts. In conclusion, uh, the implementation of a formal municipal consent application process is vital for the township to ensure consistency for all users of the rights of way. Staff recommend that the municipal consent guideline be adopted and implemented as the official guideline and process for municipal consent. That's the end of my report. Thank you, Peter. Um, I'll state the recommended motion that the Council of the Township of Asadel Norwood accepts this report regarding the municipal consent guideline for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asadel Norwood adopts this municipal consent guideline as a formal process for municipal consent. Move, move, movers? Yes, uh, move. Deputy Mayor Burke, second by Councillor Hodge Greaves. Any further discussion to Peter? Councillor Walsh. Through you, Mayor, more just a comment. Uh, Peter, well done. It's it's nice to have it really buttoned down on exactly what a utility company coming in here knows what they need to do, and if they don't do it, they know what's going to be re. Uh, there'll, there'll be no surprises after the fact. I, I especially like I just reading the as built records again. And yes. Just, you know what? If you don't do it, we'll get the work done, and you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. Exactly. That that's important to have that we have that information after a project is completed too. So well done. And is the $250 enough to cover this? 
Um, thank you, uh, Mayor. I, it should be on uh, the review process should be fairly um, quick, I would think. Um, it, obviously, if it's more complex, it may not, but I think in the long run, it'll all work its, work its work way together. Yeah. Uh, Councilor Wolf? Yeah, thank you, Drew. Just, just a comment on, uh, I guess it would be page 112 of our agenda, but page 10 um, under uh, disputes. It says that in the event of any dispute regarding the review of a specific application, the manager of public works shall have the final determination. Uh, do, you, do you feel that that burden should be all on like one person? Uh, like, do you think there should be any additional person added from the township staff? Or do you think that that is the responsibility of the uh, manager of public works? That's my only uh, question that sometimes, you know, when you get into these disputes, it's always nice to have somebody that's at the co-table with you. That's my only comment. Uh, thank you, Thurman Mayor. Um, we, we could certainly change the wording on that a little bit so that it includes um, an appointed person as well. Um, but having said that, the, the manager of public works does have kind of final say over what happens within the right of way. Um, and that doesn't mean that other managers from the township won't be consulted um, during any disputes or or, or brought in for that matter. Um, I would suspect that at least the water wastewater manager would be involved in any dispute, um, especially if it's within the village. But once you get out of the village, um, it's essentially the manager of public works. Sure. Um, but we can certainly- um, I was just thinking of conflict yeah. resolution. <laughs> you know, like sometimes yeah. it's just better to have, you know- A second person a for second sure. A second person yeah. because it just gives you a sounding board, but that was my only comment. Yep. And, uh, Otherwise, I think the report's excellent. But we, we can definitely add a, an appointed person as a, as a secondary in there as well. Okay. Any further questions? All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Peter, I'd like to, uh, this could be your last council meeting unless we have an emergency one, which I hope we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank you for your time and service here with the municipality. Up in the future. Uh, thank you. It's certainly been a pleasure working with all of you, and I certainly will miss all of you, but um, I will say I'm looking forward to my new adventure, um, and like I said, I'll miss you all. Thank you. Thank you. And our final staff report today is a manager action list, and Alan is on holidays as our CAO is away. I'll ask our clerk to proceed, please. Thank you, Mayor, for you. As the Mayor stated, our CAO is away this week, so our management team meetings will resume upon his return. But as you can see, the 26th, our next meeting is shaping up to be a pretty big one. And if you can believe it, the first quarter reports are coming forward next month. I don't know where the time is going. Um, and I know Kansas for this numerous times, so this is a living and reading documents. So we're always changing the dates and adjusting things accordingly. But if council does anything that they wish to bring forward and I can bring back to the management team table, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Melanie. Uh, I'll, I'll get a recommended motion here first and then we'll have questions for uh, uh, that the council of the township of Asset El Norwood accepts this re report with revisions suggested by staff and members of council. Uh, with Moved with comment war and second by deputy mayor Burt. Um, go ahead. Thank you, Deputy Mayor, and I appreciate that you know you've added that it's a living document. It does change. And one thing I did notice on the 2024 um, like uh, priorities, and we already have had one from the cemetery board, the West Cemetery Board, but I've noticed that it's fallen off. Um, the 2024 reports coming back. And so I was wondering if we might be just able to add that back in so it doesn't get missed um, when it comes back. Thank you. Okay. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Member. Yeah, and just after our conversation um, about the tree replacement program, I'm just wondering if we should add that on there. We have a policy, but perhaps it needs to be looked at at some yeah. point. So just the, the tree re replacement policy to make sure where, where we need to be. Um, I don't know what order, but that's for staff to decide where they want to put that. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Deputy Mayor. Of course, we'll do. Councillor Walsh. And I'm really just kind of build on what Deputy Mayor Burke said is, you know, we're going to be replacing a lot of trees and the $5,000 that's in the budget this year, we're going to probably, as they budget, as we budget for 25, 5K sounds like it's pretty light, so that's something we'll want to keep in mind on this week. 
Mm -hmm. Start down that wonderful budgeting process. Mm -hmm. No further comment, uh, Councilor Ward. Sorry, through you, Mayor, just because it prompted something when you said about the, the tree, um, you know, doing the, something that, like that. But um, Trees Ontario used to have a, a program about, uh, and I don't know if municipalities can use that, but they would come and uh, sometimes if you put $5,000 in, they actually matched it with that number of trees. Uh, and I don't know if that's even available, if it's something a municipality can use, but sometimes those. Um, uh, outside agencies we don't think of might help us in the long run. Good suggestion. Uh, do you have one more suggestion? Uh, um, there's a Maple Leaves Forever is another program, and it's maple trees, and I believe it's on municipal roadways. It's another is another program. Um, you have to look at it. I, I think it would be the trees would be pretty much going out right now, so it's something you'd have to look at. Sure, sure. But I, I think it's Maple I Leaves Forever. I believe is the program. Yeah, I think the conservation is till the end of March. You, you can also mention March 31st. You mentioned mm -hmm. the conservation one. So the, there are potentially some yeah, avenues out there. Well, so are the ones that we put on the sixth line. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that we paid a lot for. Um, everybody in favor of the motion? Motion's carried. Uh, on to correspondence for action. What's council's wishes with respect to R6, the city of Clarence Rockwood 988 National Suicide and Crisis Hotline? Support. All in favor? Motion's carried. Councilor liaison reports. Uh, does anybody have anything they wish to bring forward? Uh, Councilor Worth. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I did send this to um, our clerk, Melanie, so she has it, has it on for uh, oh, yeah. instead of bringing it on my phone. Thank you. Um, yes, the uh, Cultural and Heritage Committee has been really busy. Uh, we met February 17th, the 20th. Um, and the 23rd, I attended the digital um, Brighton Digital Archives because they are doing a project and they were highlighting how they archive and make digital formats of their collection. So I was able to attend that. It was really interesting because it's something that we want to do at the Heritage Center. And uh, February 28th, we completed the um, spring newsletter for the ANCHC, and I, I put uh, I gave each one. Uh, of our counselors, one of them, and um, Melanie is gracious enough, she's going to put it up on the township website as well. Um, March 9th, the Norma Town Hall, we had the homage, and it was very well attended. Um, he, he was a remarkable speaker, a little odd maybe for International Women's Day, but he really tied in what he was doing with, with what the presentation was. Thank you for everyone attending, and thank you for the help of staff to get the posters and the um, you know, all of that out on social media. Um, he gave permission to have the homage presentation. Um, we did a Facebook Live, and as of today, we have over 500 views, um, which is great. So not only of people in attendance, but people that watch the presentation. And just an update, our Aspital North um, Historical Society Facebook page now has over 700 followers, which I think that's pretty good. And our next historical gathering is April 16th. It's going to be at the Norwood uh, Town Hall, and it's um, a show and tell. It's our version of the Antique Roadshow. And our next open date at the Heritage Center is May 4th and 5th, and or by appointment. And then, sorry, one more report. And I apologize for not having this done, but we had the meetings in between, and I, you know, we just had the homage on the weekend. So uh, the Aspital Norwood. Business Advisory Committee, the BAC. We had a meeting March 5th at the Norwood Town Hall, and our CAO, Alan Hewitt, and our uh, Community Program Coordinator, Prudence, were in attendance. Uh, it was great. Um, it's nice to have the staff involved. We have now set a meeting schedule, and we are now having daytime meetings, and that allows staff to attend and assist with the committee and work with everyone on the committee, so it was great Perfect. moving forward. Uh, we set uh, some uh, objectives and goals, and there'll be reports coming back to council soon. And our next meeting is April 2nd, 2 p.m. at Norma Town Hall. And we just confirmed this morning that um, Elmer, Elmer Buchanan is coming as our speaker, and he's going to talk about um, 
I guess, community markets, farmers markets. And he was just named the president of the Ontario Farmers uh, Market Association. So he's coming with some great information. Um, so the, the meeting is open to the public. So that's all I have. Thank you. Very much. Uh, Councilor, or Deputy Member. Uh, thank you through you. Uh, library board meeting was held last night in Westwood, and um, I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention or those multitudes who are listening. Um, lots going on for March break at the at the uh, library, so just go online and you'll see all the events. There's multiple events on multiple days, and um, yeah, so just want to let you know. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Anybody else? Okay. Um, moving along, CAO and clerks and treasures. That's Melanie. I'm just going up. Sorry, thank you, Mary. Through you. I was just going to mention in case council hadn't seen that the fire chief changed the fire risk rating this morning. Yeah. So we're now at a high risk level. And that's kept on the website and the community boards throughout the township are updated as well. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have any? Um, Thing to do or to they would like to discuss under general business. Uh, Deputy Member. Uh, thank you. I just have one thing, and I just happened to see it uh, today. There was a Norwood High School student that won a Provincial Achievement Award. Um, it was presented during the OSSTF annual meeting in the Provincial Assembly, and that winner is Madison Gordon. I'm going to mess her name, last name up, Chukowski? Chukowski, I believe is how it's pronounced. And um, it's a, it was an art award, and um, she um, got her her inspiration from a from a fellow or former fellow student um, who was a deaf blind classmate. So that was in the I saw it online, and then I saw it um, in the paper today. So congratulations to our one of our local students. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Councilor Ward. Um, thank you. Uh, in general business, I do have one thing, and I wanted to uh, involve Council in this, um, that we perhaps uh, send a thank you card to the county um, because they assisted us in the hiring process, and they really guided us through that process. I know one of the uh, people that were on the, that was on the committee with us has since retired, but I think that it would be wise for us to send a thank you note uh, because they certainly helped um, the hiring committee. Uh, so moved. So moved. Yeah. Second by Councillor Walsh. Uh, all in favor? That uh, motion is carried. And sorry, I just have one more thing uh, for you there. Um, I was able to attend uh, the International Women's Day that the library had on that Friday um, at the town hall. It was very inspirational. And uh, thank you to Trish, the CEO of the library, because she did a great job. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Moving along, uh, we'll now be going into a closed session. And the time is 2.02 to discuss personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees in accordance with section 239-2, section B of the Municipal Act. Can I have a mover? Uh, Deputy Mayor Burt, seconder. Uh, Councillor hodge Creeps. All in favor? Motion's carried. Uh, can I have a recommendation that the Council of the Township of Acidale Norwood reconvene the open session at 2.57 p.m. with a report or with a motion, sorry. Motion to report yeah. to follow. Uh, so moved by I'll make a motion that uh, we follow direction to get any closer. Okay. Moved by Walsh, seconder by Councillor Ward. All in favor? Motion's carried. Okay. Now that we're back in open session at 2.58. I'll ask for a motion to follow direction and close, which we just did, correct? All right, motion, uh, or a notice of motion. We have a notice of motion today from Councillor Hodge-Grease, and I'll state the motion and ask for a seconder. 
that the Council of the Township of Astadale Nor would direct staff to send correspondence to the provincial government and Ontario municipalities expressing concern about the possible closure of regional public health Ontario laboratories as stated in the Office of the Auditor General of Ontario's Value for Money Audit. I have a seconder for that motion, uh, Deputy Mayor Burt. Any further discussion? I've read the everybody's read the report. All in favor? That motion's carried. Uh, bylaws. We have no bylaws today, so we'll move on to the conforming bylaw now. That the bylaws confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Aspidal Norwood held this date March 12, 2024, be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 14. Councillor Walsh, uh, Councillor Roar, all in favor? Motions carried. Council, we see our future meeting schedule before you, and that includes our business for today. Uh, can I have a motion for adjournment, please? And that's at 259, moved by Deputy Mayor Burt, second by Councillor Hodge-Greaves. All in favor? Motions carried. Thank you very much.